Today's message is brought to you by the partners and friends of Anthony Trice Ministries. Thirty in the morning, running, cause I want to feel good. I'm not. I'm just not. I'm not just talking about God. Heal me. Heal me. Heal me, Lord. Heal me, Jesus. Now, be doers of the word. You need to put some action with your prayers. Faith without works is what? Dad, I want to feel good, so I'm out running. Do I want to run? Nope. <laughs> Do I always feel like running? Nope. But I want some results. See, you don't want no results because you're just talking. I love to win. How many like winning? Some of y'all, y'all like winning? Okay, do something about it then. Don't keep talking and whining. All right. Now I can get to my text. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 15. I, didn't, I wasn't able to get here the last time. We're going get, to get there today. Got a lot of reading, but it's necessary. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 1, read. Samuel also said unto Saul. Samuel was the prophet of God. He was God's voice. He was God's mouthpiece. The Bible said he said to Saul. Now, Saul was Israel's first king. He was not God's choice. He was the people's choice. And we think we know what we want. You think you know what you want, but God sees 10 years down the line that he's a fool. You, all you looking at is the car. He tall. He dark. And he handsome. But he may be gay. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm out there now. I'm out there now. I'm out there now. But you don't know that because you can't see in the spirit because you're too busy being controlled by the flesh. Oh, you looking at her and she got a shape out of this world, but she ain't got no brains. Oh, I'm hitting too hard for some of y'all. And you don't see, all you looking at is the good looks and the long hair. In a Pepsi Cola bottle shape. But she's a vampire. Woo! <laughs> I'm hitting too hard. I'm hitting too hard. I'm hitting too hard. I'm hitting too hard. Now, you, you think this lightly. I'm telling you, marriage is not a game. You better know what you're doing when you marry somebody. When you say, I do. You better make sure that this is the will of God concerning your life. Because that person can mess up your destiny. I'm telling you. Somebody say, Father knows best. You better find out what God's will is. Watch this. My point is this. This was not the will of God for Saul to be their king. They was whining and they wanted to be like somebody else. That's dangerous. When you want to be, people, bitch, I want your anointing. No, you don't. Because you know what comes my anointing? Lies. Folk talk about you. Folk, folk try to uh, sabotage you. That's what goes with what's on my life. You looking at the house, the car, the diamond, whatever you looking at. But I'm dealing with some demons that you don't have a clue that I'm dealing with. Y'all quiet. Because you see on the surface. But you don't see it in the spirit realm. You're dealing with a demon. I'm dealing with a principality. Ooh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. It's a demon of poverty over this city that don't want to come down. And we've been fighting for years. I ain't going to say that. If it was up to me, I would be out of St. Louis. Because folk, her mind is small. Stay, we, we 30 years behind her. 
in this city. That's why I first come and say, Bishop, what you think about moving out of town? Go, 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 and don't turn back. There's some demons up in here. The only reason why I'm here is because I'm anointed to deal with this demon here in this city. All right. So you want to move out of town? Go ahead. We ain't got to have no meeting. Because <laughs> there's a lot of better cities than this city here. Because it is a spirit of poverty and lack and racism and jealousy and envy in this city. I ain't seen nowhere else. And that spirit all in the church. Because you get something here, folks. What they need that for? That is a spirit. You that small-minded, you don't want to go to heaven then. Because you know what's in heaven, and I know you ain't read it. Streets that's paid will go. So why would you respond like that? Because your mind messed up. You have a poverty spirit. And preachers are, I met some preachers that got some poverty spirit. That's why I don't be around them. Because I know you don't like me. I know you don't. Because you think I ain't saved because I like diamonds. But God like diamonds too. Y'all talk back to me. See, your mind, you need your mind renewed. Let me get back on my subject. He wasn't God's choice. This was not the will of God. And when you are doing something that God did not tell you to do, you in trouble. You know what's going to happen? Somebody say, what? It's going to fail. It ain't going to work. That's why God sent this coronas to get rid of denominationalism. Because everybody about their denomination. What about Jesus? So all that mess gone. All the preachers that was doing it for the wrong reason, all that's gone. People had the wrong motive, wrong. God didn't cut through all that. All that mess gone. And it ain't coming back. And if you try to go back and embrace it, it's going to crumble or you're going to die. All right, read. I'm preaching hard up in here. Read. For the Lord sent me to be king over his people and anoint you over Israel. God said, Saul said, God sent me to anoint you, to put my ability on you so you can be over my people. Read. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words this of the so Lord. This is so important right here. He said, hearken. You know what hearken means? Pay close attention to the instructions that I'm giving you. And we all need to come up in that area. A lot of your problems is because you... Don't listen. A lot of you, how many going through something right now? You know one of the reasons why you're going through it? And it ain't, it's persistent because you, because God has spoken and you haven't heard. I, I realize this, people that don't listen live under a curse. Look at Deuteronomy 28 and look at all the curses. The first thing he mentioned, if you don't hearken to my voice. Then he said, if you hearken into it, all these blessings will come up on you. So people that don't listen live under curse because they always misunderstand something. You know why? Because you don't know the voice of God. I'm, I'm going to share something with y'all to help some of y'all out because you're struggling with this vaccine. I'm going to help some of y'all out at the end, all right? How many struggling about this vaccine stuff? Come on, raise your hand up. You struggling whether you want to take it or not. I was too, but God spoke to me. I mean, let me see. Raise your hand up. You're acting all scared. Okay. Okay. You struggle. Okay. I was too. I'll tell you at the end. All right. Read. Read. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. Read. How he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Amalek was the enemy of God's people. Our Amalek is our flesh. Or your Amalek is whatever demon you're struggling with. Alcohol, lust, pride, anger, whatever demon you're struggling with is your Amalek. Now, look what God told King Saul. Read. He said, now go. Now go. And smite Amalek. And destroy Amalek. Destroy your flesh. If you don't kill your flesh, your flesh will eventually kill you. Read. And utterly destroy all that they have. He said, kill what? Everything. Some things. God giving him some instructions. Read. And spare them not. Uh-huh. But slay both man and woman, 
infant and suckling, ox and sheep, and camel and ass. So, so in other words, destroy. What well, is God literally telling us to kill somebody? No, He said, cut them off. If somebody's hindering you from serving God, I don't care who it is. You need to cut them off. Well, how do I cut them off? Because this is my wife. When the foolishness come up, you don't take it in. You say, no, nah, we ain't doing that because that's the devil. And if you ain't going to humble yourself, then I guess we ain't going to talk for a couple of days. Y'all scared. You, you know why you, 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 you got an issue? Because you're not seeing in the spirit. You're looking in the flesh. The Bible says, no, no man after the flesh, but after the what? Spirit. You got to, I, I look at, when I deal with you, I'm dealing with your spirit, not you. Because if I deal with you with your spirit, I'm going to deal with you the right way. But if I'm dealing with you in the flesh, I'm going to come down to your level. I can't come down to your level. I got to stay up here because I'm an eagle. I'm not a chicken. I'm not a duck. Y'all talk back to me. But when you are carnal minded, you don't even know what I'm talking about. I said, when you're carnal minded, you have no clue what I'm preaching. Because this is my spouse. Yeah, but it's the devil in your spouse right now. <laughs> Y'all quiet. The reason why I'm saying this because it, it's a lot of problems in our homes because we're compromising truth. So that person is hindering you from doing what God tells you to do. And married folk don't talk about this. They won't make you think everything's fine. No, y'all going to have some problems. Y'all going to have some issues. Ain't no marriage made in heaven. It's work, and you got to make a stand for what's right. And you ain't got to be hostile all the time. It's just that, no, that ain't God. That ain't what God telling me. We got to be in agreement. Sometimes we ain't going to agree. And you know what needs to happen? The bigger person needs to make the decision based on the Bible. Because everybody don't see the Bible the same. Because folk get to get, they get in their emotions when it comes to marriage and to see the, the wife, the husband. The wife got a role, the husband got a role. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. He just reminded me. I'll get back to this. Husbands, you the head? Let me see. How many believe that? You know what that means? What's in your head? brain. So if I'm the head, that means I need to see the devil, smell him, hear him, I'll think him. See, see, when I say head, he's the dictator. You, you, you ain't got no revelation. So watch this. Man, if you the head and you can't see the devil, you can't hear him, you can't smell him, y'all in trouble. You can't outthink him. Y'all in trouble. So what's happening? The women are the head. And they not wired to do what you do. You supposed to do. So all these problems in our homes is because men are out of place and women are out of place. I just broke that down for y'all. So man, just in case you don't know God, you don't have no relationship with God, you don't have a clue, you just going through the motions when you come to church, y'all are in trouble. Because you haven't taken the time out to find out where the head is. Watch this. Another revelation of head is first. Head and not the tail. So head means I'm, out front. I'm the first to do everything. I should be praying. I should be leading my family. I should be directing traffic. I should be giving. You'd be surprised the men that don't tithe. You, you marry some man, he don't tie, y'all in trouble. He don't honor God, y'all in trouble. Woo, Jesus. He got this crazy mindset about God. He off with God. He fall, fall off from the scripture. Y'all, that's why our homes are in trouble. Matt, divorce is 80%. 80, in the church, it's 80%. Why is that? Because we are off. So um, a while ago, Apostle had already uh, spoken to my life. And I kind of got off track and I left. And he knew I was going to come back because I sit back there in the corner. So recently, I just graduated with a degree from Maryville University. And I was looking for a job. 
I'm at a job now. And I was I wanted to stay at the job that I was at. I kept filling out, I kept filling out for physicians, but they wouldn't give me a job. I was upset because I gave you four and a half years of my life and you won't give me a job. Okay, so I filled out another hospital, so I filled out somewhere else. The job called one job, one hospital called me back and said, Well, you know, uh, basically they didn't want to pay me what I asked for. So I was like, well, you know, I, I don't think that's, you know, that's right. So another company called me and said, well, you know, well, we want to, uh, basically they offered me a job two times the amount what I asked for. I never told them what I asked for for the other position. I never told them. They come to find out my sister-in-law knows the person who interviewed me, never knew this. Know the lady who interviewed me, who offered me the job. I just want to say that being faithful, timing, and just being patient, it works. And being in a ministry and you sewing into a ministry, it works also. That's all I have to say. God never told the wife to be the head. And we have a problem when you start talking about this. Folks, see, he ain't finna tell you what to do. Him being the head ain't got to do tell you what to do. It's about leading, being an example. I got to say nothing to my wife. I'm just going to lead. If she come in, come on. If not, oh, okay. Y'all quiet. Y'all don't feel me this morning. You ain't got to be arguing. What you arguing for? I ain't finna argue with you. No. This is what we finna do. I don't agree. Okay, we'll talk to God. I just helped somebody right there. You trying to, I, I'm trying to get you to agree with me. She ain't going to agree with everything. Because you know why? God didn't tell her. He told you. Just like he didn't tell Eve. He told Adam. Oh. We still got that problem. Well, I, I used to think Adam was across the street. He was right there when the devil was talking to his wife. I used to think he wasn't there. Because he didn't say no, he was right there. How does how the devil talking to your wife and you ain't got nothing to say? Ooh, I just helped some folks right there. Let me get back to Saul. The reason why you're not winning and things are not working, because a spell is in your marriage. It's a hex over your marriage. That's why we're struggling. No, I'm breaking this hex. That's just like an intruder come in your house. And you tell your wife, get up, baby. Go and see who that, who, who that is. No, the devil is a lie. I heard some noise. What? Y'all quiet. I'm not sending my wife. No, I'm going down there to risk my life. It's the same thing when the devil come in your house. You know we need her because it's hostility there. Ain't no peace. The atmosphere is not right. That means the devil is there. And when the devil come in, you know what goes out? Prosperity, romance, victory. All that goes out the window. Because you got an intruder in your house. And I don't know about you, man. My house, I got my house sealed up. I got an alarm. I got a dog. <laughs> I got some balls. You say what you want to say. And I got cameras. So when you walk on my property, it, it lets me know somebody on the property. Y'all quiet. I'm heavenly guard. Then the Lord told me, he said, you heavenly guarded in the spirit. I said, thank you, Holy Ghost. Then I got some host of angels. I got some bodyguards. We don't believe this stuff, man. I ain't scared by no means. I'm just wise. I'm wise. I ain't playing, man. All right, let me get back to Saul. 
Watch this. I'm going to show you why he failed. You know why he failed? Because couldn't nobody tell him nothing. He did, we not, let me read this. Let me read this. We may have to end with this. Let me read this. I'm going to show you why King Saul failed. Watch this. Saul root character, character flaw is self-exaltation and self-deception. That was his downfall. He wanted to be something he wasn't. And he had self-deception. He lied to himself. He thinks he knows better than everyone else. Have you ever met somebody who act like they know everything, but they don't have nothing? You ain't got nothing, but you always talking. Watch this. The biggest tragedy is that he's not even aware of it. The story shows he is completely blind to his arrogance and always believes he's, he's in the right. That is a dangerous spirit. You being deceived, and you it's one thing for me to be deceived, and I know I'm being deceived. And I'm acknowledging, Lord, uh, you know, I made a fool out of myself. But when you're being deceived and you're being made a fool of, and you don't even know it, that's dangerous. When you won't acknowledge your faults, I know I'm lazy. Okay, you can get some deliverance. But when you're lazy and you won't acknowledge it, you never get free. I know I'm late for everything. you never on time. That's a spirit. you always late for everything. But you want to, you know what, I'm late for everything. I may, God may acknowledge that. Then he can deliver, he can work with you. But when you are in denial about you, but you know about everybody else, should none of us be talking about nobody? Should none of us be judging nobody? Let me tell you why somebody say why. Because you got some demons right in your face. That you, that you refuse to deal with. And them demons are hindering you from entering into what God died for you to have. Man, let me, I ain't got too much time. Let me hurry up. Let me, let me read a little more about King Saul. Then we're going to finish up the story. Look at this. Saul cannot get it together. As Saul's story progresses, the mistakes get bigger and the stakes get higher. Somehow he is never able to own what wrong he has done when it is pointed out to him. He could not, when, when you told me he was wrong, he wouldn't acknowledge it. He denied he was wrong. That's why I'm trying to show you how he was before God put him in his position. That position ate him up because he didn't have the character for it. And some blessings will eat you up if you don't let God work on your character. That's why some folk get blessed and it seems like they go AWOL. You know what that means? You can't handle the blessing. That's what that means. And a lot of folk can't handle, especially money. Let me, let me hear you. Watch this. He is never able to own what's wrong, what wrong he has done when it's pointed out to him. For example, Read this when you get a chance. 1 Samuel 13, he was told to wait for Samuel before offering sacrifice to God and initiating a battle with the Philistines. He didn't listen. However, and he bulldozed the head impatiently. You know how many folks I've seen that went out to pastor that God never told them to pastor? I know somebody personally. I said, man, I don't see that on you. See, that's why people get mad at me. Because I tell me, I said, man, I don't see that on you. I, I don't see you pastor. He did it anyway. Know what? He ain't pastor now. He barely in church. But I told him that. You know what? Because I loved him. And that's what I saw in the spirit. But no, I can preach. I can teach. That don't mean you can pastor people. You can't even pastor your wife. And your children. So pastoring is not a title. It's a work. And you have to have a grace to deal with hard-headed black folk. Oh, I'm sorry. I need that. I don't know about white people. I know us. I know us. 
That's all I'm saying. Watch this. Let me let me hear that because somebody can send it. Watch this. Watch this. He was told to wait for Samuel, for the prophet, before offering sacrifice to God and initiating a battle with the Philistine. He didn't listen. However, he and he bulldozed ahead impatiently. Even though Saul eventually wins the battle, he did it. He did it on his own terms instead of God. That is dangerous when you are doing something that's not the will of God. And a lot of folks don't want to hear that. And I know this from the pastor folks. I said, no, I don't think you should be preaching. You should be doing administrative work. Why you want to let me preach? Because I don't see no anointing to preach. I see administration work. See, you're trying to hold me back. Okay, fool, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And, and it comes out that I was right, but they never come back. And humbled and say, you know what, Bishop, you was right. I'm sorry. Let me tuck my tail and sit my behind down. They ain't going to do that. They just keep on in error for 30 years. And God looking at you, shaking your head like. You know why? Because we are hard-headed. I don't want nothing that God don't want me to have. You know why? Because I realize it will be a curse and not a blessing. I hope that you was blessed by that word on today. I really want to really drive the point home of where you spend eternity after you die. I know on Facebook people go and say, you know, they, I know people want to be inspired and they say rest in peace and, and they got their wings today, but it's more to it than that. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you don't go to heaven. You don't just go to heaven just because. No, you have to be born again. You have to commit your life to Christ. You have to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So if you're watching me on today and you are not saved, you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, repeat after me. Say, Lord, I'm sorry for all of your sins, all of my sins, all of my wrong ways. Lord, you said, if I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And if you accepted Christ and you really meant that from your heart, you are now born again. Now you need to find a church home. You need to find a pastor to watch for your soul. So this is Apostle Anthony L. Trice. Thank you for watching me on today. God bless you. See you next time. We invite you to become a No More Crumbs global partner. Together we can impact the world accomplishing amazing things for the kingdom of God. By supporting this ministry, it helps clothe, feed, and minister and so much more around the globe, breaking the back of life. As his ministry grows, may your life also produce fruit that will last. As a No More Crumbs global partner, we will lead around the globe creating change because your days of having crumbs are over. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If ever in the St. Louis area, please come visit our North Campus, located 7200 West Florissant, St. Louis, Missouri, 63136. Or give us a call. We would love to hear from you at 314-659-8522. For more information on how to get connected, write to us or visit us online at anthonytrice.org. And we thank you for your continued support.